The Jordan 4 is one of the most iconic sneakers in history. It has been a staple shoe for decades, influencing modern trends in fashion. The past few years, the Jordan 4 has seen a spike in newfound popularity. It succeeded the Nike dunk in a way and was sought after by everyone. Recently, however, Jordan 4s have been meeting the same fate as Nike Dunks. The newest Jordan 4 releases show immense popularity, however, they fail to perform on third-party markets and fail to sell out. This has sparked a question that's been on a lot of sneakerheads' minds for a very long time. Are Jordan 4s dead? Now, when analyzing the Jordan 4, we have to look at it from two different perspectives, the consumer perspective and the reseller's perspective. From a consumer's perspective, a lot of new sneakers have become a lot more attainable, and stock numbers for new releases are extremely high compared to prior releases. People are once again able to go to their local retailers and find an assortment of Jordans and Dunks sitting for retail. And on top of that, consumers are not spending and buying as many sneakers as they were once before. People no longer have the urge to spend hundreds of dollars on shoes on third-party sites, and especially with a lot of shoes sitting for retail, there's no urgency to go onto platforms like StockX and Goat and buy these pairs immediately after they release. While demand is still high for these very hot SKUs like Jordan 4, Jordan 1s, Dunks, and an assortment of Yeezys, a lot of this demand has also shifted to cheaper and more affordable pairs. For instance, the hottest pairs right now are the Yeezy Slides and Yeezy Foam Runners, and both of these SKUs can be picked up for around $100. Same with many Dunks. Most great Dunk colorways are only sitting for around $100, if not lower as well. The demand that we once saw that created this intense sneaker reselling market is no longer there, and people are no longer willing to spend two to $300 on these shoes. So when we look back at the Jordan 4, from a consumer perspective, there is no incentive to go pay $50 to $100 over retail when you know you might be able to just go to your local retailer and pick the shoe up for $210. For a while now, consumers have started to hold control over the market. Resellers no longer have the power and the monopoly that they once did. Now looking at the perspective of a reseller, for a while, most of us were caught up in these bubbles where we expected all these really hot shoes to perform no matter what. Even if there were many clear indicators that these shoes might not perform, a lot of us still tried to charge as much as we possibly could. Now that the exclusivity factor has been taken away from the market in the sense that you can just go to local stores now and find shoes for retail, resellers like myself have been adapting and trying to find a new way to make money in the market. There's no reason for us to be charging $250 to $260 for shoes that people could go down the street for and buy from Nike for $210. Now, of course, this doesn't always apply. Many buyers and customers cherish good sellers, so you will see returning customers that are willing to pay higher prices. However, for the average reseller and the average person, it's very hard to attain these high margins on shoes that people are able to buy for retail. So when we do analyze the market now, one factor that resellers held was exclusivity and limited supply. When we were able to control the amount of supply on these exclusive shoes, we pretty much could charge whatever we wanted. Resellers with the most pairs were charging extreme prices because they knew people wanted the shoe and there was almost no one else to get them from. But now that this exclusivity factor is pretty much non-existent for general releases, like the Jordan 4 bread, this is no longer the case. Nike has been acting very unpredictable now. They've been restocking everything and no shoe is really safe from a market dip. And what I mean by that is there's still a high demand for Jordan 4s, but when we dive deeper into the numbers and we look at the sales that are occurring, a lot of these sales are around retail or less. So when we look at it from a reseller's perspective, there is still a demand that needs to be filled, but it's not necessarily a demand that's built on exclusivity, but rather a demand that's built on these discounted and cheap prices that resellers are now charging. Now, once you start to see popular and good colorways of a sneaker go under retail, you kind of know that the market is dying. Now, you could argue that there will be a bad release every now and then, and not every single Jordan 4 will perform. But if you look at the most recent releases, including the Jordan 4 Bread Reimagined and the Military Blues, neither one of those shoes performed at all. Now, when they initially released, the demand was high enough where people were able to charge a pretty hefty amount of money. I was personally able to sell my Jordan 4 breads that I got when they released for around $280 to $300, but now my pairs, I unfortunately will probably have to take a loss because I don't even think I'll be able to get retail for them. And while the demand is still there, the supply is too high to create scarcity, which leads to these increased and really high reselling prices on pairs like these. Now, to an extent, I don't think Jordan 4s are dead. As we see, a lot of people are still rocking them. A lot of people are still willing to you know, pay a lot of money for these older releases, but I think it's only a matter of time. If we've learned anything from the dunk, it doesn't seem like Nike cares about keeping these general releases exclusive anymore. They kind of just care about the money. And recently, I'm not sure how many of you have been following, the Nike stock has taken a huge hit. 
So I think Nike will continue to just pump out whatever works. And people want these shoes. People want Jordan 4s. And they don't care about the resale market. They never really have to a certain degree because uh, that's just less money that they can make. So if there's still a demand that they can fill themselves, they will do it. We will see shoes continue to restock and we will see money being made on pairs that you can get for under retail and then sell for retail if not a little less, not the other way around like it once was. I was rocking Black Cat 4s back in the day all the time and they were one of my favorite shoes but it just doesn't seem like Jordan 4s are it anymore. And just like any trend, trends die out and something takes its place. But I'm curious what you guys have to hear. Do you think Jordan 4s are dead? And if so, what do you think the next big thing will be? Thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.